Martians. Why so many speculations and fantasies about Martians, rather than Saturnians, say, or Plutonians? Because Mars seems at first glance very Earth-like. It's the nearest planet whose surface we can see. There are polar ice caps, drifting white clouds, raging dust storms, seasonally changing patterns, even a 24-hour day. It's tempting to think of it as an inhabited world. Mars has become a, a kind of mythic arena onto which we've projected our earthly hopes and fears. The most tantalizing myths about Mars have proved wrong. So a few people have swung to the opposite extreme and concluded that the planet is of little interest. They've begun to sing blues for the red planet. But the real Mars is a world of wonders. Its future prospects are far more intriguing than our past apprehensions about it. In our time, we have sifted the sands of Mars, established a presence there, and fulfilled a century of dreams. The most startling dream of Mars was that of H.G. Wells, who in 1897 wrote The War of the Worlds. No one would have believed in the last years of the 19th century that this world was being watched keenly and closely by intelligences greater than man's and yet as mortal as his own. As men busied themselves about their various concerns, they were scrutinized and studied, perhaps almost as narrowly as a man with a microscope might scrutinize the transient creatures that swarm and multiply in a drop of water. With infinite complacency, men went to and fro over this globe about their little affairs, serene in their assurance of their empire over matter. It's possible that the infusoria under the microscope do the same. No one gave a thought to the older worlds of space as sources of human danger, or thought of them only to dismiss the idea of life upon them as impossible or improbable. curious to recall some of the mental habits of those departed days. At most, terrestrial men fancied there might be other men upon Mars, perhaps inferior to themselves and ready to welcome a missionary enterprise. Yet, across the gulf of space, intellects vast and cool and unsympathetic regarded this Earth with envious eyes and slowly and surely drew their plans against us. Wells's novel captured the popular imagination in the late Victorian era. This was a time when the automobile was a novelty. 
when the pace of life was still largely determined by the speed of the horse. Into this world, Wells introduced an interplanetary fantasy with spaceships, ray guns, and implacable aliens. These were original and disquieting possibilities. The Martians of H.G. Wells were not merely minor variations on a human theme. Instead, they were the evolutionary product of a totally alien environment. Forty years later, this fantasy was still able to frighten millions in war jittery America when it was dramatized for radio by the young Orson Welles. A few years before the War of the Worlds was published, another and quite different vision of Martians was forming in the mind of a wealthy Bostonian named Percival Lowell. The Martians of H.G. Wells were a way for the novelist to examine contemporary society through alien eyes. But the Martians of Percival Lowell were, he believed, very real. It was here that the most elaborate claims in support of life on Mars were developed. Lowell dabbled in astronomy as a young man. He went off to Harvard. He had a uh, semi-official diplomatic appointment to Korea and otherwise engaged in the usual pursuits of the wealthy for his time. But his lifelong love was the planet Mars. Lowell was electrified by the announcement in 1877 by an Italian astronomer, Giovanni Schiaparelli, of Canali on Mars. Schiaparelli had reported during a close approach of Mars to the Earth an intricate network of single and double straight lines crisscrossing the bright areas of Mars. Now, canali in Italian means channels or grooves, but it was promptly translated into English as canals, a word which understandably has a certain implication of intelligent design. A Mars mania swept through Europe and America, and Percival Lowell found himself caught up in it. In 1892, his eyesight failing, Schiaparelli announced he was giving up observing Mars. Lowell resolved to continue the work. He wanted a first-rate observing site, undisturbed by clouds or city lights and marked by good seeing. Seeing is the astronomer's term for a steady atmosphere through which the shimmering of an astronomical image in the telescope is minimized. Lowell built his observatory far away from home on Mars Hill here in Flagstaff, Arizona. Lowell sketched the surface features of Mars, and particularly the canals, which mesmerized him. Now, observations of this sort aren't easy. You put in long hours at the telescope in the chill of the early morning. Most of the time, the seeing is crummy. When the seeing is bad, the image of Mars blurs and distorts, and you have to ignore what you've observed. But occasionally,